Come on, y'all. Games are about to start. Coach, be scared. There's 10,000 people out there that think that we ain't good enough. Win or lose, I am so proud of y'all. But you're gonna win. What game are we playing? Basketball, coach. What color is this skin? White. Y'all gonna kill those Caucasians. But look at the fundamentals. The fundamentals? You're black. They're white. This ain't hockey. There's something I want to ask you. There's something I'd like to ask you. Will you get f on me? Wait, what did, what did you say? I want you to be my first. You know, I think the only really good thing I can say about this movie is that its title is just, is not for real, that there aren't movies 1 through 42 that precede this. I know, right? <laughs> did that make imagine? you nervous? <laughs> can you imagine? Oh my God. Um, all right. So I grew up like everybody else did watching the films of the Zucker brothers and, you know, like airplane and everything. And yeah. that was, of course, their first big thing was Kentucky Fried Movie, which sort of started that and, uh, um, forget the name of the one with John Candy, uh, something TV. Oh, oh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, Groove Tube. The Groove Tube, yeah. Where it was just a series of, like, sketches. Yeah. That, like, that were put together, like, as if you were watching a show. Not really Saturday Night Live, because they weren't divided up quite as neatly as that, but. Well, if, like, you, if you took the sketches of Saturday Night Live, and you took out all the commercial breaks. Yeah. And you knew you were making an R-rated comedy, so you went for it. You'd have nudity, uh, you know, foul language, just pump it up. Yeah. And then sped it up to where, like, they didn't linger and wait for laughs. It would just go from one thing to the next. Yeah, and of course with no laugh track. They yes, have that exactly. The nature of the Kentucky Fried movie. Uh, I think the last one that I'm even aware of was Amazon Woman on the Moon, which yes. was definitely a step downwards from what they had been. Yeah, it wasn't but the, it was, the quality as good, but it was still, it was in that vein. It was still pretty and, and, it's, and it's got its moments. It has several good moments. Which is why at least on, in concept, you can't blame for people some some of the huge cast of like A and B list actors that are in this film of being attracted to the idea of one of the Fairley brothers who has had I guess a better record than not at least statistically really statistically speaking okay <laughs> financially speaking okay all right uh, saying hey we're gonna make another movie like that it's been so long don't you remember those I mean all these actors now they grew up with those movies just like we sure did. going oh wow what a great idea all right important note read the script before you sign anything on the dotted line. I, there, how could anyone have read this script before saying I am yes? really of the opinion that actors don't read scripts at all. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I mean just the, the more we see it, we go like, how did you not read the script? I'm thinking they don't. They must have somebody who does it and it advises them, or it's based on who's in it, who's involved with the property, and that's where they make their decision. And they come in, like, hoping it's a good script. And maybe they don't know how to recognize a good script. All they know is, this is my role. I have to bring this to life. Well, there's that point where they trust someone enough who's, they're like, well, that's that guy's job to tell me what movies I should be exactly. in. Exactly. And maybe this here had one of those behind-the-scenes wheeling and dealing type arrangements where a bunch of agents were promised some, some good stuff as long as their people appeared in this thing. I don't know what happened, but regardless, something was rotten in Denmark. <laughs> <laughs> and it wasn't the cheese. <laughs> no, it was this movie. I, you know what? The thing is, I don't know. Like, just seeing trailers, I was just like, okay, I see where this could have some potential. It could be funny. It could be another one of those movies. People are tired of the, uh, who are the guys who do date movie and, and all, the, all those ones we hate? They're dead to me. <laughs> <laughs> but somebody like, and somebody's answer to that, saying like, hey, that's not, they're doing it wrong. We'll show you, remember the old way? This is how this is going to be. And you look at the names of who are in it. Yeah. And it's like, oh, okay, well, hey, man, I got a feeling this could be the one. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna, sometimes, like last year, I was on a roll with that. This year, not so much. I'm going to just, these are some of the top names that don't just show up like a, like a flash and oh, no. but have lots of dialogue and everything. Dennis Quaid, Greg Kinnear, Saxton, Will Sasso, Seth, Mac Seth MacFarlane, Hugh Jackman, Kate Winslet, uh, uh, Rocky Russo, Liev Schreiber, Naomi Watts, Anna Faris, Chris Pratt, J.B. Smoove, Kieran Culkin, Emma Stone, yeah. Richard Gere, Kate Bosworth, Justin Long, Jason Sudeikis, Uma Thurman, Bobby Cannavale, Kristen Bell, John Hodgman, Leslie Bibb, Katrina Bowden, Christopher Mintz Plass, Chloe Grace Moretz, Patrick Warburton. I mean, this is just, I'm sorry, it goes on from there. Gerard Butler, Sean William Scott. It's this ridiculously Halle Berry in yeah. one, uh, like, you think you've seen her do the most embarrassing thing she can do on camera? <laughs> I'm sorry. All right, here's the thing. I'm just going to say this now. Everyone associated with this movie... I am officially giving you a big demerit on your record. You're going to go home, and you're going to make your parents sign this report card, <laughs> and you're going to bring it back, and there's no extracurricular activities for you until you have done something to make up for this monstrosity. Here's the thing, Cyrus. 
I didn't hate this movie. What? At first. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. I'm with you then. All right. I thought you were going to go, I loathed it. <laughs> I went in with the best of intentions, as we do. And the opening ski- scene yeah. is with uh, Kate Winslet and Hugh Jackman. Yeah. And I thought it had a good opening. The setup. Yeah. And even like when they delivered the punchline, it's a visual gag that was funny at first. And I found it to be where the two of them are really good performers who have a comic timing that I didn't expect. Sure. And while it was one of those gags where, you know, it, it turns out despite being it's obscenely rich and handsome and going out on a, on a blind date, Hugh Jackman has uh, a scrotum on his neck that's grown from his neck, yeah. which no one acknowledges. Yeah. And Kate Winslet is freaked out. And, of course, it involves him, like... Eating dinner. And, yeah, and, and putting it on people and a child's yeah. head. And, yeah. And, and I, I got a lot of joy out of her playing off of that, being the one who notices it and freaked out while everybody else isn't. And some of the gags, I was like, yeah, God, this is so sophomoric, and yet I am laughing at it. Okay. All right. Well, it, they start out this way, but they take it up, then that's fine. But it only goes downhill really fast when, from there when, and keeps it hits rock bottom and tunnels when you start with a, two classy actors like those two doing like uh you know the lowest common denominator joke they've ever done in their career yeah <laughs> i mean I, already i was very uncomfortable with it just because of who was doing this gag at all but i was like okay this is kind of funny but it's going on real long and yeah. then it ends and there's no punchline it's just like well the whole joke was just that he had balls on his chin uh and, yeah, you're right. It just gets worse from there. Yeah. And, I mean, I, actually, the, the punchline was that it was Dennis Quaid giving his pitch after, like, a whole setup of, like, oh, I'm going I'm to give you, a, I'm pitching you a movie with heart that, that's going to say something. And if you don't want this, I'll take it to 20 other studios. But that wasn't even the punchline of that gag. That's the punchline of the entire movie. No, you're right. right. You're right. It's, it's just like funny. that gag c- cuts back to Greg Kinnear going, what the fuck? Get out of my office. Yeah. You're crazy. And he said, no, no, I got another one. Now, that's when I went, oh, well, okay, Maybe they'll get better from here. Yeah. But they don't. No, no. When you get to the next one with uh, uh, directed by Peter Farrelly, who directed quite a few of these. There are different directors for right, some of them. Right, right. But with uh, 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 Anna, uh, with Leah Schreiber and Naomi Watts, who are a married couple who have a teenage son, Kevin, who they're homeschooling. And they're yeah. telling this other couple about how they've raised this kid, not only for all the, you know, the stuff you'd want to give a kid from high school, but they figured the experience wasn't complete without all the negative stuff. So they beat him up and they set, they harass him and like, even like go so far as to have like the first date with his mom. With his mom. And you're just like, okay, so the only joke you had here was the uncomfortableness of incest. Yeah, that was yeah. The only well, joke well, well the, the harassing him and the yeah, no, that's that's the crescendo. But it's a joke that I thought was a funny joke. But it's like if somebody told you that joke over and over and over, and it's like, dude, you can't keep telling the same joke. Yeah, it's like a it, it stops minute, being funny. It's a ten minute sequence with nothing else to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 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 one of those where it's like, wow, they, you know, you got these these good actors who seem to commit to it, um, but but the writing just let it down and. And not having somebody there to blow the whistle and go like, okay, enough already. Uh, and at that point, you've seen the best this movie has to offer, which is to say, not very good. I, actually, there's one more thing I thought was good. Oh, really? I'm curious, because I hated everything else. No, 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 I know, I know, no. It's it's detestable. It's just like, I, I would just want to bring out the things that I did find that maybe right. well, I completely hated. And the other thing was J.B. Smoove. Uh-huh. That, that he's in a, uh, one of the skits with, with Chris Pratt and um, Anna Ferris where... He wants to propose to her, and she wants him to shit on her. Uh, see, that was, I thought, the most detestable of anything in this whole thing. <laughs> don't, no, don't get me wrong. It's just that the, there's the one scene where J.B. Smooth is talking to him at the barbecue. Yeah. And J.B. Smooth, I thought, was funny. Okay, like, yeah. He makes me laugh. No, no, he, and he has a very short appearance. It's a, yeah, it's a short appearance. He, he comes in, he does what he, what he does, which is very funny. And everything from that point on was just... Uh, yeah, that was just a, a hint of things to come. But even with that skit, as terrible and detestable as it is, I feel like it was kind of trying. Not in any way I liked. Yeah. But from that point on, everything was just so half-assed. Yeah. And I, I love sketch comedy, and I love <laughs> my influences all come, like, earliest influences came from sketch comedy. They came from the movies of the influences for this. Uh, and even the superhero scene in here with, with uh, oh, Justin mm-hmm. Long playing Robin, Jason Sudeikis as Batman. Uh, and like uh, pen- uh, Bobby Cannavale as Superman. Yeah, uh, with that- his name, who's the Penguin. It's uh, uh, Oh, I don't know that guy's uh, name. Uh, he's, he's al- no, he's always with Justin Long with yeah. those... Those Mac commercials. It's uh, John Hodgman. Okay, yeah. Leslie Bibb is Wonder Woman. 
that you know that should have spoken to me, right? That should have been funny. Yeah, where yeah. Robin is speed dating and Batman comes and interrupts it, which by the way is a rip off of an internet sketch. Which, what he that he does with, with, with Sam Rockwell, yeah, as Batman. Yeah, as a matter of fact, yeah, the, the fact that Sam Rockwell didn't show up as Batman, I went it's like, huh? Yeah, well, and the internet sketch is actually really funny, and it goes a completely different direction. This just relies on the crudest possible yeah, jokes. Yeah, it does. Because Batman hiding under the underneath the table while. Uh, uh, Kristen Bell comes over as Supergirl as the dating and he starts describing like the old joke where he's got the earpiece so the guy can tell him what to say like yeah. the uh, what do you call it uh, Cyrano Cyrano de Bergerac yeah. or Roxanne uh, except he's just describing how big her pussy is yeah and that's I'm sorry you made somebody out there probably just laughed and that's fine because that was just one off but when you just compound it with that's all you've got yeah is that kind yeah. of shit it just did that over and over I mean clearly it's like this is the setup maybe this happens go you guys improv something and you might be telling yourself, oh, I'm curious, because look, James Gunn directed one of these. <gasps> well, let me also point out that Brett Ratner directed one of these. Yeah, I saw well. that Brett Ratner. Which one did James Gunn direct? He did the last one with <gasps> Elizabeth Banks and Josh Are you Christian serious? Campbell. That was the worst of all. It was awful. Yeah, where it's like he has an animated cat that's like gay for him, and and uh, he doesn't want to believe that the cat is evil, but you know the cat yeah. keeps fucking with her. Yeah, and trying it's to get just rid of his girlfriend. Filled with, once again, more gross-ass whole yeah, scene. Where he's yeah, covered. pissing all over yeah, her. It's just like, this is just, it's not funny. It's every obvious joke in the world that's the biggest problem with this film is like there's nothing in here that isn't terribly obvious or stuff you just never wanted to see in a million years like I present for your evidence Halle Berry turkey basting super hot sauce into her vagina what? which sounds actually kind of sexy when you say it super hot sauce into her vagina hey, maybe I'm in the weird shit yeah, but uh yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> I, I don't even want to know where that <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's her and Stephen Merchant on a. They they constantly truth or dare each other to do crazier shit. Um, somewhere in there, I can see where somebody's first thought of it, and it could be sweet or go somewhere. But this doesn't. It just everything is taken. Either things just lie dead, or they take it to to such a degree that you want it to die. Yeah. I mean, I tried to hold out hope for it, but after maybe the first three of these, and even like the the framing story itself. Uh, yeah, which which at times I'd be like, okay, but even that reaches a point where I'm like, can we just fucking end this? Well, it, I mean, even the movie itself does that. It, it does. It finally goes to a point, it's like, oh, for God's sakes, <laughs> just fucking finish the shit. And, which is, I, you know, you there's a point you start to wonder if everyone was had to, much like the characters in the framing story, yeah. had to make this movie at gunpoint. You know what? That, that's the funny thing, is that this movie, the setup is that uh, at one point, Dennis Quaid pulls a gun on Greg Kinnear and says, hey, I- I'm going to hold you at gunpoint and make you listen to my pitches. But I thought like the movie was doing that to the audience. It's yeah. like it's holding a gun on you to like, hey, listen, watch these one unfunny, horrible story after the next. I think, you know, it's funny, as much as I hated a lot of this, uh, and my second favorite is probably the Holly Berry, uh, uh, Stephen Merchant yeah. one, which is just pointless. But probably nothing is as offensive in here in a non-funny way as the one with Cl- uh, Chloe Moretz, where she's oh, on, a, yeah. you know, on a first date with this kid, and they start kissing, and she has her first period. All right? You know, a setup for an awkward scene in a movie, whatever. It's not offensive in and of itself. What's offensive is they think the whole sketch is funny because every guy in that family who's around, like, her, you know, the, the boyfriend, her boyfriend's brother, yeah. the dad, her Oh, dad my God, you're bleeding to death. Come in and start making really just a huge deal out of it, making offensive jokes about periods. And it's just like, this is... I'm sorry. I mean, offensive is funny when it's funny, but it's not funny just because it's offensive. Yeah. You know, and that's the problem this <laughs> that, movie falls into. That's a good point. Did you notice how um, is Christopher Mintz Platts and Chloe Moretz, you know, like, uh, who were both in, um, uh, what do you call it, Kick-Ass, but how they look younger in this than they did in Kick-Ass? Yeah. Like, like, it must have been shot a long time ago. I don't know. Uh, let's see. It began shooting in 2010, apparently, but... Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. It says they first started working on it about four years ago, but didn't start shooting in 2010. But they shot it like a week at a time. They'd shoot for a week and then close down for a couple months. Yeah. So I think they would just shoot the... The idea is... Uh, and I can't, I'm 
I think we're not seeing the end of this sort of shooting by any stretch of the imagination because Uwe Boll made an entire career out of it, which is sort of take advantage of the actor's availability shooting, uh-huh. which is like write scripts that are designed around using big name actors for short periods of time okay, so that you can get butts into seats because of all the actors that are in it. It doesn't really matter whether the movie's of quality or not or whether or not those actors are even well cast for those roles because everybody wants to keep on working if they have an opportunity, if it's easy, if it's a good check, and it only takes a day out of the oh, Absolutely. And, you know, you catch these guys, you're like going, okay, who is not working this week? Yeah. Give them a call. Yeah. And you can get A-list actors like this to come onto your set sure. to do that. I think I suspect that this whole film was constructed based on the, the bowl theory. <laughs> the bowl theory. <laughs> and, and you know what? And and for that, yeah, I guess if it's an experiment, you're like, hey, can we get butts in a seat? Well, I believe the evidence will show that no. <laughs> and they can stop doing this. I, I hope that people don't actually go and see this. I haven't read what the ticket numbers are like, but I hope they're, I hope that people storm Hollywood and burn it down. Because <laughs> <laughs> pitchforks and torches. Seriously, right? I mean, yeah. this, no, there's no misunderstood monster here. Oh, we understand this monster <laughs> and it needs to die. I mean, they can only get one Fairly brother involved for Christ's sake. I know. <laughs> I mean, I, yeah, that's pretty bad when the other Fairly brother is going like, Come on, man. That's too lowbrow, even for me. I know. <laughs> Maybe now we know which was the one we should have... What the problem was. So you watch these good Fairly Brothers movies that would be interrupted with scenes. You're like, why do you have to put that in that there? That would have to happen often, too. Yeah, that was one of my biggest problems with their movies. They're always so uneven with the gross-out and the shocker jokes. Yeah. I was like, come on, man. That was just fucking... That's not even funny. It's just <laughs> interrupting a narrative. <laughs> it's like, okay, Peter, you're out. Right. <laughs> You don't get to play anymore. You don't get, no. Out of the sandbox. <laughs> Aww. Too bad. Too, sorry. <laughs> you done fucked up. You fucked up. Maybe you'll learn for next time. <laughs> I doubt it. Uh, well, I, you know what? Hopefully, like the ticket prices, will, it'll bring in so little money that he'll have a hard time raising more to do another one. I, I hope so. Uh God, some people were calling it like the Citizen Kane of awful. That was one of my favorites. <laughs> I remember reading Richard Roper wrote a whole piece about like he's had this pill that someone gave him once to say this pill will automatically erase the memory of any film you've ever seen. <laughs> and he lists all these movies he almost took it at, and the, and the, but didn't. But he's like, finally, movie 43 was the one. <laughs> I finally said, no, no, I can't take it. I took it and it didn't work. <laughs> Fuck you, guy who gave me that pill. <laughs> And I like couldn't agree more. I was like, just a film that just it slowly dawns on you as you're sitting through it, just how bad of a situation you've sat yourself into. It's true yeah. that that is the feeling that that I could imagine had we all seen it together, and how I would have been smiling, going like, "Oh, it's okay," and you guys would have already been on the page, like, "This is awful." And I'd be like, "No, no, give it a chance," and it would have dawned on me like. I've led us down a dark path, and this is all my fault. I am the leader of the Donner Party on this. <laughs> oh, no, seriously, it's probably for the best you didn't. Anyway, uh, not to belabor the point. I think it's pretty obvious what the point is. This movie fucking sucks. In fact, this isn't even the worst movie of the year so far. This is probably the worst movie of the last decade or so. I mean, it's that level, or at least one that made a theatrical release anyway. Yeah. It's just that degree of terrible that you almost think that there, like, there's some bet going on like in trading places between two high-powered <laughs> producers that no one will actually go see this film. <laughs> uh, I'm going to give this a double fuck you. The lowest rating imaginable. Uh, I... Almost everything you said was true. I still, I guess I haven't seen a lot of Freeberg and Seltzer movies, but I feel like this is still on that level as those, but those are fuck yous as well. Yeah. That's uh, what I'm saying. Yeah. 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 Uh, it's, it's, I mean, gosh, I was able to enjoy some of the performances in, in the most clinical <laughs> and technical way, <laughs> which is what will keep me from giving it a double fuck you. Yeah. But I'm sorry. Like, it really wore out the goodwill that I had towards it. Uh, so, yeah, it's 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 a, it's a definitely a fuck you. Well, see, you know what elevates it to a double fuck you for me is the fact that, like, the well, those uh, Friedberg and Seltzer movies are definitely fuck yous. They're fucking awful. There's nothing in them that felt like anybody was even, like, trying or spent time or there's no illusion about what they are. There's, there's nothing to lure you in. Yeah. And but you don't have the, you don't have the Kate Winslets in there to make you go like, oh, well, maybe. And this, not only do you have that with the, you know, the, your, 
you know, it's nauseating watching these stars be treated like this. You almost feel like like you're watching them be tortured. Like this is the hostile of. <laughs> I would have felt like that if not films. that they had like some some um what do you call it? some clips some some outtakes where like Hugh Jackman looked like he was actually having fun doing it. Yeah, maybe. I mean, they got him high on nitrous oxide. <laughs> or something. But he's like, I'm getting paid how much? But All the right. other thing is, those other Freebird and Seltzer movies tend not to be quite so. Uh, Copperphilic, you know what I mean? They're not so, they're not at the bottom level of R. They tend to be like, ah, uh, they're, at the well, very, that's true. They're only inoffensive because they're not funny. Okay. The, the, okay, good point. Yeah, these are flat out offensive and trying to be offensive. And I, I, you lose points for that with me. Oh, yeah. you gotta, man, you make a good point. Even lower than fuck you. <laughs> wow. Because there has to be something lower now. I never thought there <laughs> But now that we only has to be lower than fuck you. <laughs> Oh, we have to bring this up at the next meeting. I know, right? <laughs> How many times do I have to tell you? You're black, they're white. So, Coach, what you're saying is we just walk with the Lord. The Lord did his part already. He made you black.